One Gospel, Version 3, Part 10, Jesus' Final Journey to Jerusalem Continues, taken from the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Jesus heals a crippled woman in a synagogue on a Sabbath. He was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. There was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. It was bent over and was not able to raise herself up. When Jesus saw her, he called to her to him and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her. Immediately she was made upright and glorified God. The ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. He said to the multitude, There are six days on which we ought to work. Therefore come and be healed on them and not on the Sabbath day. Then the Lord answered him, Hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or a donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it? And ought not this one, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? When he had said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame. And all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. He said, What is the kingdom of God like? And to what shall I compare it? It is like a grain of mustard, which a man took and cast into his garden. It grew and became a great tree, and the birds of the heavens dwelt in its branches. Again he said, To what shall I liken the kingdom of God? It is like leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal until all was leavened. Jesus teaches about salvation on the way to Jerusalem. And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and making progress toward Jerusalem. One said to him, Lord, are there only a few who are saved? And he said to them, Strive to enter in through the narrow gate because many, I say to you, will seek to enter in and will not be able. From the time the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, you will begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. And he will say to you, I do not know you or where you are from. Then you shall begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. And he will say, I tell you, I do not know you, where you are from. Depart from me, all you workers of unrighteousness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you cast out. They will come from the east and the west, and from the north and the south, and will recline in the kingdom of God. Look. There are ones who are last who will be first, and there are ones who are first who will be last. On that same day, some Pharisees came near, saying to him, Go forth and depart from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox, Look, I cast out demons, and I accomplish cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I will be accomplished. Nevertheless, I must journey today and tomorrow and the day following, because it is not possible for a prophet to perish outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stones those sent to her, how often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. Look, your house is being left to you desolate. And truly I say to you, you will not see me until it will come when you say, Blessed is he who is coming in the name of the Lord. Jesus heals an indemnous man at a Pharisee's house. It came to pass as he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on a Sabbath that they watched him. And there was a certain man before him who had edema. Jesus answering spoke to the Torah experts and Pharisees, saying, 
Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? But they kept silent. And he took hold of him and healed him and let him go. Answering them, he said, Which of you, having a donkey or an ox that has fallen into a pit, will not immediately pull him out on the Sabbath day? They could not answer him again regarding these things. And he spoke a parable to those invited when he noted how they picked out the chief places at the table, saying to them, When you are invited by anyone to a wedding feast, you shall not sit down in the chief place at the table, lest one more honorable than you may have been invited by him. And he who invited you and him come and say to you, Give this one your place, and then you begin with shame and take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down in the lowest place, so that when he who invited you comes, he may say to you, Friend, go up higher. Then you will have glory in the presence of those who sit at the table with you, because whoever exalts himself shall be brought low, and he who brings himself low shall be exalted. He also said to him who invited him, when you make a dinner or a supper, do not invite your friends, your brothers, your relatives, nor rich neighbors, lest they also invite you back, and a recompense come to you. But when you make a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous." And when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. He said to him, A certain man made a great supper and invited many. He sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, because all things are now ready. And they began with one accord to all excuse themselves. The first said to him, I have bought a field, and I need to go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. Another said, I bought five pairs of oxen, and I am going to examine them. I ask you to have me excused. Another said, I married a wife, and because of this, I cannot come. And that servant came and reported to his lord these things. Then the master of the house being angry, said to his servant, Go forth quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in here the poor, the maimed, the lame, and the blind. The servant said, Lord, it is done as you have commanded, and there is still room. The Lord said to the servant, Go forth into the highways and paths, and compel others to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say to you, that none of those men who are invited shall taste of my supper. Jesus teaches large crowds that travel with him. Great multitudes went with him. He turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, mother, wife, children, brothers, and sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has the things to finish it, lest, after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going on to engage with another king in war, does not sit down first and considers whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. But if not, while the other is still a long way off, he sends an ambassador and asks for conditions of peace. So then, every one of you who does not set apart all that he has is not able to be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its flavor, with what shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor for manure. It is cast out. He who has ears to hear, 
let him hear. And all the tax collectors and sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and Torah teachers murmured, saying, This one receives sinners and eats with them. And he spoke this parable to them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, but having lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the lost one until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. When he comes home, he calls together friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, because I found my sheep, which was lost. I say to you that in this manner there shall be joy in the heaven over one sinner who repents, rather than over ninety-nine righteous persons who have no need of repentance. Or what woman, having ten drachmas, if she loses one drachma, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek for it diligently until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together female friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the drachma that I lost. I say to you, In this manner there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. He said, A certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to the father, Father, give me the portion of possessions that falls to my share. And he divided his livelihood to them. And not many days after the younger son gathered everything together, he went abroad to a far country, and there he wasted his possessions with profligate living. When he had spent all of it, a severe famine came in that land, and he began to be in want. He went and found himself or joined himself to one of the citizens of that country, and he sent him to his fields to feed swine. And he longed to fill his belly with the pods of the carob tree that the swine were eating, but no one gave anything to him. When he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have a superabundance of bread, and I am perishing with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against the heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. When he was still a great way off, his father saw him and was moved with compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against the heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and give a ring for his hand and sandals for the feet, and bring the fattened calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. Because this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. His older son was in a field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the young servants and asked, what these things might be. He said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf, because he has received him in good health. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came and entreated him. He said to the father, Look, I served you so many years. I never transgressed your commandment. And you never gave me a young goat, so that I might be merry with my friends. But when this, your son, has come, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fattened calf for him. He said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. But it was right and proper that we should be merry and be glad, because this your brother was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. He also said to his disciples, There was a certain rich man who had a manager, but an accusation was brought to him that he was wasting his wealth. He called him and said to him, What is this I hear concerning you? Give an account of your management, for you cannot be manager any longer. The manager said within himself, What shall I do because my Lord is taking away the management position from me? I cannot dig. I am ashamed to beg. I know what I will do. When I am removed from the management position, so they may receive me, into their houses. 
he called every one of his lord's debtors to him, and said to the first, How much do you owe my lord? He said, A hundred baths of oil. And he said to him, Take your record, and sit down quickly, and write fifty. Then he said to another, And how much do you owe? He said, A hundred cores of wheat. And he said to him, Take your record, and write eighty. And the Lord commended their unrighteous manager, since he had dealt prudently, because the sons of this world are more prudent in their generation than the sons of light. I say to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous riches, so that when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting tabernacles. He who is faithful in the least is also faithful in much, and he who is unrighteous in the least is also unrighteous in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous riches, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in what is another's, who shall give you what is your own? No domestic servant can serve two lords, for either he will hate the one and he will love the other, or he will hold firmly to the one and he will despise the other. You cannot serve God in riches. And the Pharisees, who were lovers of money, also heard all these things, and they derided him. He said to them, You are those who declare yourselves righteous before men, but God knows your hearts, because what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the presence of God. The Torah and the prophets were until John. Since then the kingdom of God has been proclaiming the gospel, and everyone is pressing into it. It is easier for the heaven and the earth to pass away than for the smallest dot of a written letter of the Torah to fail. Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery, and whoever marries her who was divorced from a husband commits adultery. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day, and there was a certain poor beggar named Lazarus full of sores, who laid at his gate and desired to be filled from the crumbs which, he, which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. It came to pass that the poor beggar died and was carried away by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades he lifted up his eyes, being in torment and saw Abraham far off, and Lazarus in his bosom. He cried, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, because I am tormented in this flame. And Abraham said, Child, remember that you received your good things in your life, and in the same way Lazarus received evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all these things, between us and you, a great chasm is fixed, so that those who are willing to pass from here to you cannot, neither do those from there pass to us. He said, I ask you then, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may testify to them that they may not come into this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if one went to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if one rises from the dead. He said to the disciples, it is impossible for stumbling blocks not to come, but woe to him through whom they come. It is more profitable for him if a millstone were put around his neck and he was cast into the sea than for him to cause one of those little ones to stumble. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turns back to you, saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord said, 
If you had faith like a grain of mustard, you could say to this sycamine tree, be uprooted and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding sheep, will say to him immediately when he has come from the field, come and sit down to eat? But will he not rather say to him, prepare what I may eat for supper? And fasten your belt and serve me until I've eaten and drunk, and afterward you will eat and drink? Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded to him? I think not. So you also, when you've done all these things commanded to you, say, We are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty. Jesus heals ten lepers. It came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the middle of Samaria and Galilee. As he entered into a certain village, ten leprous men who stood far off met him there. They lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Rabbi, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priests. And it came to pass that as he went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving thanks to him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? There are not found, there are not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner. He said to them, Arise, go your way. Your faith has saved you. Jesus teaches about marriage in Judea. And he came to the borders of Judea by the other side of the Jordan. The great multitudes followed him and came together to him again. He healed them there, and as he was accustomed, he taught them again. The Pharisees came to him, testing him and asking him, Is it? Torah compliant for a man to divorce his wife for every cause? He answered to them, What did Moses command you? Did you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this cause a man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they the two will be one flesh? Therefore they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together let no man separate. They said to him, Why then did Moses permit to write and command to give a certificate of divorce and to divorce her? Jesus said to them, Moses, for the hardness of your hearts, wrote you this command and permitted you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning of the creation, it was not so. God made them male and female. For this cause a man shall leave his father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they the two shall be one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together, let no man separate. And I say to you, whoever shall divorce, divorce his wife, except for sexual immorality, and shall marry another, commits adultery. Whoever marries her who is divorced commits adultery. And in the house, his disciples asked him again concerning the same thing. He said to them, Whoever will divorce his wife and marry another commits adultery against her. And if a woman will divorce her husband and is married to another, she commits adultery. His disciples said to him, if the cause worthy of punishment for the man with his wife is thus, it is better not to marry. He said to them, All do not receive this word, but those to whom it is given. For there are eunuchs who are born in this manner from their mother's womb. There are some eunuchs who are made eunuchs by men, and there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of the heavens. He who is able to receive, let him receive. 